Hey everybody, I'm JJ. You're watching Reality Survival. And so today I'm going to show you how to install uh, EMP shield on your house. Now, an EMP shield is basically a device that is um, an advanced type of surge protector. Uh, this is what we're looking at right here. It's upside down, but um, it's an advanced type surge protector that will protect your home and all the appliances that are hooked to it from an electromagnetic pulse from a high altitude nuclear detonation or from a coronal mass ejection or from a single strike of lightning. Um, if it gets struck by lightning, it has to, you can send it back and they'll send you another whole unit for 50 bucks, I think. Um, but it, the, the key thing with this type of surge protection is, is it's specifically built for EMPs or coronal mass ejections because of the speed that it reacts. And so um, that is, is sort of the thing that is special about this as opposed to other types of surge protectors that go onto your house for regular lightning suppression or something along those lines. If you live in a lightning prone area, this might not be the best, um, you know, the, the best surge protection for you. If you get multiple strikes and that kind of thing, you might want to go with uh, more of like, you know, a Siemens or something along those lines that are built specifically for lightning. But these units are built specifically for EMPs and they, they react in the picosecond uh, domain or something like that. They're, you know, they're like in the billionths of a second or something. Um, and so the idea is, is that they'll take the excess energy that's detected in the circuit and they'll shunt that off to ground as it's happening. So as it's building up, as it's happening uh, before the wave is even complete, and that will keep your uh, circuitry and everything in your appliances from getting burned up. So that's that's the idea behind this. So let me show you the uh, instructions on it. If you're not comfortable with installing, working in a uh, breaker box, then you should not do this yourself. You should have a licensed professional do it. I'm pretty comfortable working in these, so I went ahead and did it myself. It's four connections. Let me show you the uh, instructions here. That is what we're looking at. And um, you've got a ground bar and a neutral bar. And um, in most panels, that's how it is. Mine's a little bit different than that. They, they're both the same. Uh, and then you've got two... Uh, lines in that you need to go to your 20 amp circuits that are closest to the uh, main service power. So let me kind of show you what I did here. So before you start, what you want to do is you want to take a look at your whole breaker panel and figure out where is the place that I can mount this that is as close as possible you know, to the top of where the panel is. Now, my panel is a little bit goofy uh, in that, and, and maybe other panels are like this, I don't know, uh, but it's got the higher, the 50 amp breakers and stuff up here, the, the bigger, the larger ones. So I'm gonna, I'm coming down to the first place where I can get access to the first 20 amp breakers because that's what it, that's what it specifies in the instructions. And it wants to have the shortest run of wire possible to those breakers. And, um, so I chose to put this right here and it goes right next to it. As you can see, I've got a grommet in there. You want to make sure that you always have a grommet anytime that your wires are passing through a metal connection. And then if you can see these wires right here, this white, this green, this black, or put it right there, that black, and that red are the wires that I just put in. And so what you want to do is you want to turn your panel off. You want to turn your main off up here at the main power. Turn it all the way off so there's no uh, electricity in your panel. And then you can identify, um, you know, kind of how long your wires need to be. And then where you want to plug them in. Plug them in. This, the white and the green go to the uh, ground uh, or the neutral 
uh, bar. Mine are the same, basically. As you can see, we've got ground wires and neutral wired in here. They're not, uh, they don't have them separated out. It's really all the same on the ground and neutral. Um, so that doesn't so much matter as far as I can tell. And then um, you want to go one um, 20 amp breaker as close to the top as possible. And then the second one, now I had two, I had two wires in this one already. So I dropped it down to this one and I think it'll be fine. And then I screwed it into place. It's like I said, it's upside down, but that doesn't matter. You just have your LED indicator lights showing you that each line is good to go. If I, if I clip this off and you can see it, it turns that one off. If I clip that one off then it turns that one off. So um, the system is charged and, and good to go and it's it's all you know detecting everything and, and running appropriately um, now there was a there was a question recently uh, on one of the comments on on one of the other videos I did on this asking about uh, does the power need to be on for these to work and they're supposed to be hooked to a live circuit within your circuit board so that they can sense, most accurately what's going on in the system so they can monitor all that voltage as it's live but if the power went out this the system will still work because it will as soon as the system as soon as the circuitry is energized by the pulse it immediately reads that and starts to shunt that inner the excess energy off so to the point, uh, like, and where this comes kind of comes into play most often is if you set up a system on your uh, home house, your whole house home generator, and most times when you're not using it, that circuit is a dead circuit because it hasn't switched over to be running at that point. And so even when it's dead, it'll still protect all that circuitry. And it's the same thing on your house or whatever. Um, but you do want it to be hooked to the live uh, circuit if possible so that it can best you know sense and read what's going on with your system and everything like that so uh, all in all uh, these are very simple to install and they, to me they make a lot of sense because you know the world we live in uh, it's I don't think that there's going to be a nuclear war. I don't think that's a high probability, uh, but I think we're basically at a coin toss as to whether or not somebody could detonate a nuclear, a nuclear device in Ukraine or even maybe in Russia for testing just to show that they're serious about the whole Ukraine situation. I mean, I, I don't... Again, I don't think that that's going to lead to any kind of a full nuclear exchange or anything like those lines. But sometimes things go wrong and sometimes, you know, uh, weird shit happens. And, and <laughs> you know, when, when personalities are involved and everything, things can go bad. And so to me, for the cost of, you know, what these costs to do it, I think it just makes sense to go ahead and get it done. I definitely think it makes sense to have it done on vehicles as well so that you can get home if something, you know, happens, something detonates while you're at work, which most people spend a lot of time at work. Um, I want the ability to be able to get home at least to try. And maybe I would get stuck in traffic or whatever, but I think that I could figure out a way around that um, if I had a running vehicle. And so to me, it's a lot safer trying to make it home when, you know, 30% of the vehicles on the road still run rather than trying to, uh, trying to walk. That doesn't make any sense to me. So, um, I think, I think it, these are a logical thing to do. And the other important thing is, is that these are, um, these are certified and, and tested by, uh, Keystone Compliance Labs. And the only reason that I decided to work with these guys as an affiliate was because they went to an outside third party tester. Uh, and that lab is a lab that I was aware of previously because I know that they do testing for DOD. And so I know that they're an independent lab. And they say that these things uh, exceed all the military specifications. And so that's why I trust it. That's why I trust the company. That's why, you know, I, I think that these that I'm comfortable recommending people to put these on their houses is because I don't think there's any world in which Keystone Compliance Labs is going to fake a test or, you know, something like that. And they do pretty awesome testing there um, just to uh, 
just to make a couple of bucks or something like that because that you know if they were shown to be a fraud they would lose all their dod contracting work and everything like that and there's just i just don't see that that's possible i don't i don't see that they would risk it for one small company like this it just doesn't make sense to me um so anyhow um i can save you guys fifty dollars on these uh, fifty dollars per unit if you use the discount code reality survival and um an electrician probably is going to charge you less than an hour's labor. They shouldn't charge you any more than an hour. I mean, it really only takes about 15 minutes. Um, but they, you know, they, they'll, they might charge you for the service call and coming out and all that kind of stuff. But for as easy as it is, I just, I just think it makes a lot of sense. And here's the other thing is, is, you know, we, we recently, uh, talked about you know, a few months back, we talked about the uh, the EPRI study on EMPs, and that study, you know, basically highlighted that that it's not it's not as bad. EMPs are not as bad as the initial congressional reports said that they were several years prior. Um, now they can have a difference of opinion on who's right and who's wrong, but that EPRI study was a three year study. It went on for a long time. They were very comprehensive and they really dug into it and they, and they tried to figure out like what items, uh, you know, what items in the grid are particularly vulnerable and what would we have to replace and how can we source that and how long would it take and all that. And basically what they came to the determination of is that they're, that one detonation over, you know, a uh, central area in the United States or whatever would probably end up knocking out the power to five or six different states. And, you know, it all, it all depends on the exact height and the exact yield and all that kind of stuff. But um, that there would probably be a 90 day to 120 day or something like that uh, power disruption before they got, they were able to get things back up and running. Now, that's still a very long time. Um, there's going to be a lot of chaos in that 90 to 120 days, or let's say, call it even six months. But it's not the, you know, two to three years that everybody, you know, thought or four or five years or longer that everybody used to think. And, you know, you hear that myth, you know, that was written in um, Bill Fortune's uh, One Second After and all that kind of stuff. And at the time, that was the best information that we had. And it's a great series of books. You should definitely look at it. Um, but it's just not factually accurate anymore. And at least that's according to the data from EPRI. Again, you can choose whether or not you want to believe that. That's that's up to you. Um, but I think that, you know, it makes sense to look at the most current available and the stuff that is done in the most scholarly way in a, in a, in a you know, long-term kind of study. And it seems to me that they did that in that study. So, so what does that mean for you? Well, what that means is, is that if you don't have EMP protection on your appliances in your home and all that kind of stuff, then if one goes off, all your refrigerator and your, you know, stove and all the appliances in your house, your washer and dryer and all that kind of stuff, those are all going to be foobard, right? They're going to be fried and they're not going to work. And if you have an EMP stall in your house, those will all be good to go. Now, I want you to picture what it would be like trying to get a new washer and dryer after the, you know, five or six states, let's say if it was just one detonation, if five or six states have been without power and what the demand is going to be like on the supply chain in trying to do this, let alone the fact that a lot of that stuff is built in China and overseas and all that kind of stuff anyway, the, the supply chain is going to be completely disrupted in a, uh, it's going to be upside down and inside out. And it's going to probably end up taking several years for the supply chain to even get ironed out. So, even if your power comes back on, if you don't have any appliances in your house, what does it matter? You're still going to be without power for a long time versus those people who do have power, who their circuits were protected, then you're going to be in back into a situation of at least a little bit more normalcy way faster than everybody else. So it's just, you know, it's just a um, force multiplier when it comes to that stuff and being able to put you ahead a little faster than everybody else. Um, now it's important to note that th with these systems, with the EMP shield, you have, it only protects the things that are plugged into the system 
that are on a 120 volt circuit, okay? So it does not protect anything that's not plugged in and it does not protect anything um, that is on, that like would be a, its own separate uh, circuit like a whole house generator or something. You have to have a whole house generator um, unit on 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 uh, for that its own circuit right so you have to have one in the in the whole house generator panel and then you have to have one in the, the your house panel and i showed you that in a previous video when i was in indiana and you guys can take a look at that if you want um but other than that i mean you know all your computers everything is plugged into the circuit and all that kind of stuff is all going to be protected as long as it's you know within the you know, like 3,000 square feet uh, vicinity, you know, or uh, of the network. Uh, if you had a really large house, like a 6,000 or 7,000 square foot house, you might have to put two devices in, you know, the, the separate panels for the house or whatever to cut, get the whole coverage area. But, f but for the, um, for the normal person, for the normal sized house, you know, around two to 3,000 square feet or something like that, then, then that, these things are going to work great and you're not going to have any issues. Um, I don't remember what the cut, the site, the square footage is, but basically it just has to do with distance and how far it can monitor what's on the system, uh, accurately at those speeds, at those billionths of a second speed, you know? Um, and so that's, that's what it has to do with. And so you just have to have it a little closer, you know, um, to be able to monitor stuff that's that far away, if that makes sense. If I'm not making sense to you, just put a question in the comments below and I'll try to, I'll try to clarify it for you. But anywho, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I can't think of anything else. I think these are a good idea given this, the, the ridiculous craziness that we have in the world and the possibility that, you know, people could lose their minds or that, you know, the leaders in the world are, octogenarians most of them are 80 years old maybe they just wake up one morning and decide they're going to go out with a blaze of glory i don't know um you know I, I i don't think that's the case i think that the status quo and mutually assured destruction would keep people from doing that for the most part um i've said that for a long time and i still think that's true but i do recognize that we are inter we are inching closer to the possibility that something like that could happen and I'm a prepper, so I try to prepare for those kinds of circumstances and make sure that my family is going to have every advantage possible to try to make it through and survive any of these kind of crazy situations. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to put it in. Um, it's an easy, it's an easy thing, and uh, it only took me about 20, 25 minutes, you know, something like that, to to do this, start to finish, and gives me a little peace of mind, you know? So anyway, guys, like I said, if you want to save $50 per unit, uh, use the discount code reality survival. There'll also be a link down in the description below, but you can just use a discount code, um, over at empshield.com and that'll save you some money. So I hope it, hope it works out and, uh, stay safe and don't forget to live six P's proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe guys.